Howdy, folks. Colin and Shreya Lay here. We are the founders of Lay Roots, which is an amazing asset protection law firm, in case you haven't heard of us. Today, Shreya Lay, yes. I want to give these viewers five tips for creating their asset protection plan. Before we get into those five hot tips, Shreya, if you have questions about setting up your asset protection plan, if you've been worried about potential lawsuits down the road, go ahead and visit livemorecarefree.com to book a free initial no obligation consult with this young lady. Again, that is livemorecarefree.com. Shreya Yes, Colin Lay. We got some tips coming in. Are they hot tips though? Because I don't want to hear them unless they're hot. They're hot tips. Let's just, <laughs> come on, let's just get right into them. Number one, insurance. Right. What? Insurance? Yes. Your first stop in your asset protection planning is always going to be insurance. And you guys might be confused because we sometimes talk about how insurance is not enough, but that doesn't mean it's not a necessary part of your plan. Right. It is certainly the base yeah. of your lawsuit protection. Yes. So good get, one. Get the get the right kinds and the mm -hmm. right amounts. It's always going to be the cheapest form of protection. And a lot of times your policy, if you do get sued for something that's covered, is also going to start covering some of those attorney fees, those massive yeah. attorney fees for going to court. Right. But then if it doesn't cover those things, you can go higher up on, go this, higher up. on this tip ladder. That'll take us to the <laughs> second tip. <laughs> Second tip is to utilize your state exemptions, is what we call them. So basically every state has decided that certain property, certain amounts of assets are going to be protected from lawsuits, usually by default, right? You don't really have to do it. If you've, yeah. if you've got, I don't know, $3,000, that's protected. But right. there's better things. Um, a lot of times homestead Retirement. exemption. Accounts, yeah. a lot of times. Retirement accounts, um, 401k, it just depends where you live. A lot of places, everything's protected. Some places, they it's a certain limits, amount. They but yeah. yeah. It could be IRAs are protected. Homes. Homestead exemption, yeah. So like in Washington State, you get 125000 of equity protected, which... Which is nothing in Seattle. It's not a lot these days. Your yeah. house probably grew by 125000 in value in the last few months. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly, as we record this in April 2021. Yes. <laughs> but there's other states like Texas or Florida where they mm -hmm. say, hey, put everything in your home. Basically, it's safe. Uh, a creditor can't take that away from you. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you have questions about that, you can always ask a professional about what laws apply in your state. Yes, but you certainly want to utilize them mm -hmm. as part of your overall asset protection planning. Sure. So that takes us to step or tip three. Tip three is utilizing <laughs> business entities, right? right? If you're doing these risky activities of going out there, hustle grinding, making money, you're yeah. more likely to face lawsuits. So you want to use business entities to help insulate that liability, yeah. the business we liability. Like to think of it as putting little boxes around things, right? So you put a little box around your business. Or a bubble. Or a bubble, yeah. I like bubbles these days. Yeah, sometimes the bubble can be pierced, but mm -hmm. for the most part, the bubble is going to keep things inside of it. Um, and so you want to put those operating businesses or business assets in their own little bubbles. Right. So an example of if you were not doing this, um, you'd be working as like a sole proprietor or something. Yeah. And you're basically doing everything in your personal name. Right. Which makes then all of your personal assets available to anyone who is upset with you and wants right. to see you. Because they're like, hey, judge, there's no difference between this primary residence ownership and this investment property ownership. All of this stuff should be on the table. Mm -hmm. And that's why tip four is going beyond that business entity, that LLC or something, and setting up a stronger entity to protect your personal assets, that would be something like setting up an asset protection trust. Mm -hmm. Again, this is creating more boxes or, or bubbles around your 
various assets and protecting them from those outside mm -hmm. creditors, lawyers, whoever, who yeah. might come and try to take them away from you. Right. And we talk tons about asset protection trusts. In other videos, go check them out. Check them out on the channel. Yeah. Here we are, Shreya. We've arrived to tip five. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This I have gonna, no idea what it's going to be. This is going to be the craziest tip. This is going to be the tip that nobody else talks about <laughs> except for us. It is to be a nice person. Yeah. And that doesn't mean to be like a doormat and allow people to walk all over you. Yeah. But there are so many examples and studies that if people are nice in the sense like there's a study you of- show some empathy in someone's situation. Yeah. Like doctors who spend an additional 30 seconds talking to their patients mm -hmm. are like- 90% less likely to be sued for malpractice. Yeah. There was a case of a woman who her like eyeball exploded when it got hit with a golf ball oh while she was, you know, standing in the middle of the golf bystander. course. Yeah, yeah, it was at one of these events that yeah. people watch. It's very sad. Uh, and she eventually sued the everyone probably who she could. And she said she would have never done it had just somebody come along and said, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Like, Are you okay? Yeah, just checked in on her, but they went into like corporate defense mode and they're like, yeah. we absolve ourselves of all responsibility of this. <laughs> Please leave the you premises. You signed this waiver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, things like that. And, you know, courts have decided that just because you apologize for something, just because you say sorry in a car accident, that's not you admitting fault. Like Trey said, it's not, you know, you being a doormat. It's just you know, showing some empathy yeah. um, that the person is having some wrong against right. them or, well, you know, suffering in some hurt way. Or suffering. And I mean, maybe it is just like a pure accident, but just having that moment where you're check in on someone to make sure they're okay yeah. can uh, go a long way. Then it doesn't, people aren't stewing in their <laughs> anger, you know, and then yeah. they, and then they see that commercial for that attorney who's like, hey, you want to see someone? Have you been wronged? Yes. I will take the case. <laughs> yeah. And I will, you won't pay me unless I get paid. That sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, so those are our five tips for asset protection planning as insurance, using your state exemptions, utilizing business entities for your business activities. Which is just smart business too. It is. For setting up an asset protection trust and five, be nice sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, do us a solid, be nice to us. <laughs> Hit that like button. Oh, yeah, yeah. Consider subscribing up there. And thanks for watching. See you next time.